Hey guys, this is Paul Welburn, and this is Faith Baptist Church Sunday School. It's currently Saturday, tomorrow is Sunday, and it is getting to be near 5 o'clock, and since it is September, the sun has been setting a little earlier. It's cloudy, so it looks darker than it normally would at this time on a September day. But if you have any Jewish friends, you know that on Friday around sunset is whenever Sabbath begins, and the Jewish Sabbath is Saturday. <clears throat> for uh, Christians, for Gentiles, uh, the Sabbath is on a Sunday. And it's interesting to think about, should we start the Sabbath at sunset and on Saturday? And one of the reasons why Sabbath is on a Sunday is because that is the day the Lord arose from the dead. Jesus was crucified on the cross, and he was in the tomb three days, and then arose on that third day, which is which would be Sunday morning. So that's, if you've kind of wondered, why do uh, Jewish people have the Sabbath on a Saturday and then Christians have it on a Sunday? Well, that's, that's really the simple reason why. But we're looking in the Old Testament, and I wanted to clarify the Sabbath before we began to look at this passage. And if you see my hat, it's a, it's a Mustang hat. And uh, this is actually the second one of this. I lost the first one in between here and Camp Caswell at Oak Island. Anyway, long story, but it was at a gas station and we had a bunch of youth and I hopped out of the vehicle, hopped back in, it was gone. So it's somewhere, a Hardee's, uh, person that was at the Hardee's there in Laurel Springs got it, so anyway. But my hat is of a Mustang and I love Mustangs. I enjoy the cars, they're a fun car. Uh, they're relatively simple to work on and inexpensive. If you're like me and, and uh, the older you get, the less patience you have with expensive things that break. Well, Mustangs are a good car. Pretty durable too. So I guess you would consider me a you know, fan. I have several Mustang shirts and, and a hat. Actually, I actually have a few hats. And of course, the Mustangs themselves. I'm getting ready to go get pizza at Pizza Vino in a Mustang. So you can look at me and say, well, that, that guy likes Ford Mustangs. Hey, Paul, there's a Mustang. I don't know how many times I've heard that throughout my life. Hey, Paul, I saw a Mustang. Really? Okay. Now, you know, I could really get into it and say, oh, okay, it was, a, it, was a, it was an 04. Okay, so it was one of the last years of the uh, SN95 body style. Was it a V6 or a V8? A 4.6 liter is what they have, you know. And usually people kind of glaze over. They're like, I don't know, Paul. It was just a Mustang. And so I'm like, okay, good, that's great. And, you know, I'm not, a, I'm not a jerk about it, but, you know, in my mind I'm thinking, okay, what kind or whatever. What if I could apply that same amount of focus to my faith? What if, if somebody had a question for me about the church at Ephesus? I saw a really good YouTube explanation about Ephesus this week. A young man gave a great explanation. I thought, that was fantastic. Well, what if somebody had a detailed question about the Bible, and what would I say? How would I respond? How would you respond if somebody had a detailed question about the Bible? For example, you know, why do we worship on Sundays? So anyway, just think about that. How much of a fan are we? So Exodus chapter 20, verses 7 through 11. Do not misuse the name of the Lord your God, because the Lord will not leave anyone unpunished who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. You are to labor six days and do all your work. But the seventh day is Sabbath unto the Lord your God. You must not do any work, you, your son or daughter or female servant, your life, uh, male or female servant, your livestock or resident alien who is with you or city gates. For the Lord has made the heavens and the earth, the sea and everything in them in six days. And he rested on the seventh day. Therefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath and declared it holy. Probably 20 years ago, I was outside washing one of my cars on a Sunday afternoon, and a church member drove by, and uh, boy, she picked at me, and she gave me a hard time. Ha ha, Paul, you were washing your car on a Sunday. Ha ha. You know, and I thought, oh gosh, I felt bad, you know? And then, you know, I jokingly said to her, well, look, I, we are in the New Testament. We don't live by the Old Testament. And, and again, it was kind of ha ha, and, and it was meant as fun. But then, you know, I thought about that, and right now, especially during quarantine, the days run together, especially if you're in school and you're 
taking virtual classes right now, or if you are in a job that has been basically sent to, to, to home to work from home, your days can kind of blend together. And so Saturday, Sunday, it just, it just kind of runs together, and Sunday ends up being another day where you can catch up and do work. Our church has actually started having services. Um, a few months ago, they started having two services to be safe, to split up the crowds. One is early and one is at traditional time. I go to the early service, and I found there's a gap of time whenever I get back to the house between the end of church and lunchtime. <clears throat> I get choked up thinking about it. No, I'm just kidding. But there's a gap of time, and so me, I'm one of these where I have a hard time sitting still, so I think, oh, okay, I can take care of something in between then. I can go out and, and mow or dig up a plant or wash a car or whatever, and it's on a Sunday. And, you know, for us, it's okay because we live by the New Testament. But then it's not okay if we lose sight of God and his blessings, and it is okay to take a break. It is okay to rest. Let's look. David talks about it in Psalm, Psalm 14, uh, excuse me, Psalm 145, verses 1 through 3. I exalt you, my God, the King, and I bless your name forever and ever. I will bless your, you every day. I will praise your name forever and ever. The Lord is great and is highly praised. His greatness is unsearchable. How often have we praised the Lord? Or... Do we go to the early service and check off the box that we had worship service, and then we can get on to the rest of our day? Hey, we finished up early. I have some friends that go to uh, church on Saturday, and they have Sunday to, to do whatever, and it's, it, it is. It's just kind of another day on a Sunday. Not to cast stones or say they're wrong, or, or especially myself, because I think about my activities on a Sunday. But just think about it. Have you lost focus of what the Lord has done in your life? Let's look, um, let's look on at, at Scripture, too, and, and we're at seven minutes, so I'm watching my time. But, you know, what does it look like when we bless the, the, the Lord each day? What does it look like? Is it whenever we pray at, at breakfast or lunch or supper? Or is it whenever we kind of check the box each morning when we have a five-minute Scripture time, when we read our Charles Stanley devotional, when we're on the elliptical, and we think, okay, I'm good for the day. You know, and... Uh, it's just me talking, but it may apply to you as well. David says this, One generation will declare your works to the next and will proclaim your mighty acts. I will speak of your splendor and glorious majesty and your wondrous works. They will proclaim the power of your awe-inspiring acts. I will declare your greatness. They will give a testimony of your great goodness and will joyfully sing of your righteousness. David's saying, my kids are looking at how I bless the Lord and how thankful I am for what the Lord has done for me in my life. My kids look at me and see my actions as far as do I recognize a certain day as being holy to the Lord? Again, I'm speaking to myself. Our families that are around us and families, uh, that's, that's a greater, um, you know, it's church families or friendship families look at us and think, you know, how do they worship the Lord? And, okay, they go to church, but is it, again, just kind of something they do as part of their life? Is it just part of routine? So, what do you appreciate about God's works in previous generations? That's, that's one question I have. And then how can we declare God's works to our future generations? Do we keep his name holy? Do we use it in vain? Do we um, say, oh, God, in the sense of, oh God, please help me, or in a sense of exclaiming whenever something goes wrong. Do we take time to worship the Lord and take a break on Sundays? I know a lot of folks take naps on Sundays, so I guess that could qualify as resting on a Sunday. That's pretty good. I need to do that. What about how we declare God to the next generation and how they see God in their lives and how they witness God in our lives? Especially right now, whenever all the days are blending together, we're looking at the news. There's a big election coming up. Things may be different financially because of what has happened with COVID. So how do we worship the Lord? How do we focus on God? And on Sundays, how do we stop and just say, okay, I'm going to take time to worship the Lord? Think about it. Hope you guys have a great week ahead. Have a great Sunday. We'll see you soon. Bye.